Hey loves, it's Elle and welcome back to my channel and happy Quick Tick Tuesday. I'm starting these back up on Tuesdays. Today we're going to be talking all about blush, highlighter, and bronzer slash contour for a more aging face. So before we get started, hit the subscribe button, give me a little thumbs up, share this with somebody that you think might like it, and let's do it. So to start this off, we need to talk about face shapes and then we'll get into products. So face shapes are really going to be a telling guideline for where your blush, contour, and highlight should go. I want to start off also by saying not everyone needs every single one of these products, specifically highlighter. I, I don't use it on a daily basis, but I will use it when I'm trying to glam something up or look a little bit more chiseled. Uh, the way that you place all of these components will really change your face shape and for the most part this is one of those techniques that really change the game between a makeup artist and a regular person because they know what face shapes and where things need to be placed to enhance certain parts of each person's face shape all right so as we go along, I'm going to give you guys different tips for whatever face shape you might have. Now, for me, I have kind of this uh, oval, <laughs> I say, oval kind of squared off face. I have a couple different, in my opinion, a couple different shapes in my face, uh, but it's definitely a lot longer around the perimeter um, I don't I have I don't have big cheeks as I used to have before so it actually made it into more of a heart shape when I was younger now it's definitely elongating out starting to, to do its thing but it's uh, definitely going to be a little bit more elongated on me um, I don't really have natural contours in the face um, as we age, we use a, we lose a lot of volume in the face, especially under the eyes, um, especially in the cheeks for a lot of people, and we start to have a little bit of a different jawline than we had when we were younger. So using a matte bronzer um, really will be your best friend because that is where we are going to start today. So I suggest one of my go-tos forever, and you can see it's so well loved, is the NARS bronzer and this is in Laguna. Uh, there are so many different types of bronzers. I don't love to use a contour um, for most clients of mine because I feel like you can still get definition of the face um, by using a bronzer because we don't want to have anything super cut for, in my opinion, for a more mature face shape. Um, we want everything to be soft. We want it to round things out. We want it to lift. We don't want it to be this kind of angular application. And I do have a couple different videos on contour specifically for a little bit more aging face if that's what you're looking for. And I will try my best to either uh, link them up above right as I'm speaking now or below. So I'm going to use the one that I normally use. This is Laguna by NARS. I also have been obsessed lately with the Charlotte Tilbury bronze and glow uh, palette, but it is um, a not necessarily a matte bronzer. It does have a little bit of shift to it, but my go-tos are always going to be a matte bronzer because I will add a little bit of glow with the cheek blush area. So um, obviously, you know, I've talked about this before, uh, brush technique and brush uh, selection is going to be very important here because you don't want to have anything that's too big for the area. I'm going to start off with this brush. This is a brush by Luxie and it's the 504 brush. You can see it has an angle here. I also love the NARS brush. This is so fantastic. It is a kind of a fail-safe brush when you are doing your bronzer and blush can be used for both, okay? So, but we're just going to, for, you know, time's sake, we're going to be using this. Um, I want to show you a little bit of the application for my face shape. So remember, when you are adding anything dark to the face or anything that's darker than your skin tone, you are adding a shadow. So you are making that section have an optical illusion of a recession or it's being pulled back or it's being diminished. Um, so that's what you want to think of when you're applying your bronzer. You're thinking to yourself, okay, 
where in my face do I want to add more definition or do I want to add an optical illusion of it kind of being uh, smaller or receded or where do I want it to look a little bit more chiseled, okay? So I take my brush, I go into my bronzer, tap off excess, super important, you don't want to use a ton of product when you're doing this. For my face shape, I want to give it a little bit of definition right here. For most mature faces that have either been on a weight loss journey and lost a lot of volume here, or that just have that kind of face that is a little bit more gaunt, I really want you to skip this part. I don't think you need bronzer in this area, all right? So if you have that more face shape, hang tight. So for me, I'm gonna turn my brush on its side just like this so the longest part is facing down and I am going to start from the ear and my pressure is so light. You can see the brush is not being bent. It is just really, really light pressure, okay? And for me, I'm gonna stop at the end of my eye because I don't need this to be a little bit more defined. You're gonna see a lot of beauty influencers bring it up here. If you want to, if you want this to look a little bit more round, you can bring this up, but it can get really, really muddy. So for the most part, when I teach classes and do clients, this is where I take my bronzer, okay? I do for my um, face shape, I'm gonna bronze up this area right here because my face does go back a little bit further. If you have hair that comes up almost to your brow bone, skip this step, okay? Now, if you have a forehead like me, which is a rather large forehead, I'm okay with it, I am going to bronze up this perimeter of the face because, again, when you're using a darker color, it is going to give the optical illusion that this area is a little bit smaller. I am going actually into my hair, into my hairline, so it looks like one cohesive picture. So you don't want to stop and, you know, have a line right here with your hair. You want to bring this into your hairline, okay? If you have bangs, you might not necessarily need to do this step. So I want to show you already the difference between it. So this is already looking smaller. This is already looking more defined with very little product, okay? I'm also wearing a very lightweight foundation for purposes of showing you this for an everyday definition um, tips for this type of application. I'm going to go back into this, and I'm going to tap off excess. Now, this is where a lot of us need a little bit of help. I'm going to lift my chin up like this. My hand is back on the brush. I am going to start at my ear and go right on top of this jawline. Very light pressure. So I'm not going underneath it. I'm not going on top of where my cheek is. I'm going right on top of the jawline. And you do not have to use a ton of product to make this look more chiseled. Do you see the difference? It is definitely looking a little bit more defined and a little bit more lifted. You can absolutely take a little bit more product and kind of bronze this section up a little bit. If you do have a little bit of extra um, skin that is sagging here, go ahead and put a little bit of bronzer, just a little bit, over that area and it will help to recede that and give that optical illusion. Again, I cannot stress enough the small amount of product that you need when you do this application technique. And again, I'm gonna show you one side so you guys can get the gist, okay? Now let's talk about highlighter. One of my favorite things to do for especially more mature skin is to use a matte highlighter. So I love the um, Anastasia Brow Matte Powder um, Pencil and base number two for me. And you can use that right here on top of your cheekbone. I'm going to use something different. This is Shy Beam by Benefit. It's fantastic. It is a beautiful highlighter and it is a matte cream highlighter. So I usually like to put this on my hand just like this. You can take your beauty blender, you can take your finger. I'm gonna take my finger for just right now. I'm gonna start not down here, I'm gonna start on top of my cheek. You wanna smile, and where the light naturally kicks out this small little kind of glowing part, that is where you want to apply this matte highlighter. 
the reason why I suggest, and you want to bring it down to right where the color of your eye starts. And the reason why I like to use a matte highlighter here is because sometimes as we age, we still want this part to pop out, but we don't want the light reflecting properties of it to enhance any fine lines or texture that we might have here. Um, I love this product, honestly, because it is so sheer and look at the difference right away. It does no glitter to it, has nothing to it. It just is literally a matte highlighter. And I'm just going to bring it again on my temple and right here where my color of my eye starts. This is going to be something that you can skip as well if you have a little bit more of that gaunt um, face shape. Because if you're adding light, if you remember, light is going to bring something forward. If you have more of that gaunt face shape where it is already sunken in here naturally, you're going to make this bone right here protrude even more and make that more apparent, okay? So for the most part, if you do have that face shape, you don't have to do any of the steps that we just did in this section. You might want to do here and you might want to do around here. Now, if you have a smaller forehead, remember, you do not need to do the bronzer because you want to bring things forward if they're smaller. So if you have a smaller forehead, what I like to do is I like to use the same matte highlighter and go over the brow a little bit. And what that's going to do, and just it's tapping motions, guys, tap, 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 tap. And what that's going to do is that is going to bring this area right here forward. And it's going to make this stand out a little bit more and make the forehead feel like it is a little bit larger. If you have a medium to deeper skin tone, um, Benefit actually makes it an amazing highlighter. Um, and it's called Sunbeam. And it is stunning for medium to deep skin tones. I feel a medium to deep skin tone, they really could um, benefit from a little bit of something kind of sparkly right here. Um, it just uh, it glistens off of the, your guys' skin tone and I am jealous of that, to be honest with you. So there we have it. It is bronzed, it is highlighted. Now blush, I get a lot of questions about blush. If you have quite a bit of texture right here, um, I would use a matte blush. Um, sparkly blush or blush that has any kind of sheen to it is definitely going to show that texture. I love the Hourglass blushes. I love the Charlotte Tilbury brush blushes. Um, Milani makes some beautiful blushes. So again, let's not get caught up on the product. Let's get caught up on the technique, all right? So I'm going to take this beautiful blush by Hourglass. It's an incandescent Electra. And I am going to use a blush brush that is perfect for my face size, which I'm going to be using the NARS brush. This is actually going to be for most people. You want to make sure that you're choosing a blush brush that fits this area. So using something like this is going to be way too big. This is going to be perfect for you. Now, when you have a face shape that is similar to mine, um, I like to enhance this area right over where we have highlighted because for me, I want to keep my blush up and lifted and I don't want to bring it down. For the most part, when you are um, have a face that is a little bit more mature or aging, you really want to stay away from the apples of the cheeks because obviously, as we know, we go smile and then we apply blush right here and then we smile and it drops. So we let the smile go and it drops and that is going to bring our face down. So when we apply blush, I don't want you to smile. I want you just to look straight ahead, tap your brush, blush brush into your blush and tap off the excess, look straight into your mirror and I want you to start right on top almost where you have your bronzer and your highlighter and right in the middle you're going to gently push back into the hairline. By keeping a blush on this area of the face, it will really, again, bring that face up. Now, I will go right here, right under the eye. And so when I smile, there it is, okay? But what it happens is that this, I'm recreating that little fullness that I am missing in my face.
just right here. If you can see, my pressure is so, so light. I am using these small circular motions and I am using the tip of the brush, which this is for, okay? You can run it right over the nose to keep everything looking realistic. You can even go right into the hairline and right underneath if you want to as well. So here we are with a great blush application. The face is kind of gently and naturally uh, shaped and highlighted. And so you can feel good about going out. All right, so both of the sides of the face are done. Now remember, none of these are hard and fast rules. Please play with the placement of all of these things that really bring joy to you and make you feel really good. Um, if you wanted to add a highlighter on top of this, I love the Hourglass ones. The Dior ones are fantastic. The ColourPop ones are amazing. Um, but I necessarily wouldn't if you have some problems with fine lines right here. So I hope that these tips helped you guys out. I really love doing Quick Tip Tuesdays. Comment below and let me know what else kind of quick tips that you want me to comment on and share with you. So I I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you on the next one. Lots of love from me to you. Bye.